Okay, so we're going to go over the basic controls for the GXT3 and also the Solar unit. They're interchangeable. The units look identical. One says Solar, one says Liebert. They are the same unit. Um, basically, before we put power to the unit, um, right here we have an L530R receptacle. And that's going to plug into the power cord, which is on the back of the unit, which is an L530P plug. Prior to checking, um, prior to turning the unit on or plugging it in, we need to verify that this plug is oriented properly for the polarity of your line and your neutral. The plug that has the little prong on it is your ground. The larger blade is the hot, the smallest blade is the neutral. So from hot to ground, we should have 122 volts. From ground to neutral, we should have zero. And from hot to neutral, we have 22 volts again. So my plug is oriented properly. It's properly phased out. On the back of the unit, if I spin it around, on the back of the unit, we have a couple plug assemblies down at the bottom, outlets, normal uh, 15 amp outlets. They do have one 30 amp plug assembly for the output, the input cord, and an on off circuit breaker for the main input going into there. Um, a couple different output uh, circuit breakers, thermals. This unit does not have the alarm card that normally we have installed. If you're changing a unit out, you'd have to unplug and unwire the alarm card, whether it be a 25 pin connector or the Phoenix connector blocks. Before you insert the card, make sure the jumpers are installed or not installed according to the drawings for your alarm card. For our purposes, the, all the jumpers usually come off the alarm cards. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make sure this unit is off right now. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in my cord, power cord. So here the fans kick up here in a second. Oh, not yet because it's not on. Um, so it's off, everything's gone. Turn my switch on. Unit powers up, we get a couple LED indications. Okay, get that center for you guys. All right, a couple of indications here. We have a battery charge indication, and we have a load indication. Right now, we have nothing on the on the unit. What I'll do is I'll put this meter on the output of one of the 15 amp plugs. Okay, so right now we got 73 millivolts across there. Essentially, it is off. Getting a little bit across there. Um, a couple different units we have here. In order to turn the unit on from a cold start, like we're at right now, we're going to go ahead and push the solid slash on button. The unit's going to ramp up. LED is ramped up. It takes about 30 seconds. Transfers the bypass real quick. Then you'll see it kick over to inverter. Okay. At this point, we have output of 119 volts 0.6 on the output of that UPS. At this point, all of your controls, if anything needs to be plugged in, um, you plug those in now. Um, of course, we need to do all of our checks on our polarity for the plug cords before you do any cord plugging in. Make sure your cords are going to be plug ends. Then you need to check those for proper polarity out to the switch gear. In order to take the, this uh, device down for maintenance, one of the things is, if we go ahead right now and pull the power to it, you're going to notice the inverter's still on and now we're on battery. 
So we can't just unplug the unit because right now we're still outputting power on the output side. Still on battery, you hear it beeping. We have a battery indication with the amber light and the green light tells us our inverter is still on. Going to reinstall the plug there. You'll see the battery light kick off. It'll go back to the straight on inverter. Okay. The ideal way to do it would be to transfer the unit to bypass. Press and hold the circle with the line. It'll indicate it by one long beep. You'll see the orange bypass light come on. At that point, we still have output there, but now you'll notice the voltage. I was at 119 on line. Now I'm at 121.1, essentially on bypass through the machine. At this point, sometimes the back of the unit is not accessible. So what I recommend doing is, if you don't want to unplug uh, the unit and get all the covers off, you can't get to the main bus, you can, you can essentially just go ahead and unplug the unit at this point, and that'll go ahead and kill everything you have. So sometimes you can't get to the back of the unit just due to the, the covers and the bus might be hot and that kind of stuff. So we transferred the bypass, we kill the unit, the unit on the output's dead, my output here is now dead. Uh, when we're done with our maintenance, if we're going to go ahead and isolate the unit, remove it for, for that kind of stuff, remove all your power cords and everything. Now when I restore power, I already have that switch on in the back. That's why the unit come back came uh, returned to service. But you'll notice all I have is an input. I don't have any AC output and I'm not on bypass. I have to go ahead again, transfer it back online, press and hold that for a second. Unit will ramp up, take about a second, transfer to bypass, and then it'll go right online. So that is our quick and easy. Um, if we're on battery, we're going to indicate there. If we're on bypass there, any alarms here. So real simple, again, to take it down when it's online, transfer to bypass with the circle button, unplug your cord unit will die. To restore the unit, plug the unit back in to a known good power source. Press and hold the, the solid line for about a second or two. The unit will go kick on back online. Bypass inverter. Okay. Now, to run a battery test, you can run a battery test. That's what would happen if I pressed the line, the solid line again. You're going to hear it go to battery. You're going to see this come up. Okay. Right now, I am on battery. It'll start beeping here in a second. Um, maybe. Okay. It's off battery. It's back on inverter. So that's just a real quick diagnostic check of your battery circuit. Um, that's basically what that'll do. So, about a 30 second battery run is what that line does. And you'll notice it does not shut your output off by hitting that line there. So, the only way to shut the unit off is to transfer to bypass with the circle on the line. Then go ahead and remove your cord. And that's about it. That's the basic startup of the Liebert and Solar GXT3.